I was about to pull the I'm doing better shtick, so yeah, I guess not. <laughs> I'm sucking nut like everyone else. I wish I had the bandwidth to just blast the source recording at Twitch, because I could do it. Um, well, maybe I can. But they don't transcode for me, so that would suck. <clears throat> yeah, when I upload to YouTube, it's in 1440. Oh, that's a weird camera angle. Trips out. <laughs> I got no control over it. Get up there. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, by now you'd think people would have it down to just decent quality because it hasn't really changed in quite a few years oh yeah yeah we still don't have any 4k TVs Just haven't haven't had the need for it yet we got 4k monitors though that's nice that is really nice <laughs> yeah. No, they don't. Netflix uses shit. Always blah, blah, blah. Push to emergency stop on the APU. Blah, 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 blah. Always remove reverser handle and set handbrake when leaving locomotive unattended. Oh. That's kind of clever. I always thought it was neat that you could... Uh, the way these trains are built. You could just straight up stand on the front of them while they're doing their job, just ride from the front. Action cam, actual action. Well, I don't think Netflix upscales <clears throat> Uh, some of their stuff is actually 4K, but their encoding is fucking terrible. Um, this is a a sequel, or not a sequel, a follow-up game to Train Simulator 2019. Well, the Train Simulator series. And yeah, it's it's all new engine and everything. I'm still curious how they got Unreal Engine to do huge outdoor areas like this. I guess they stream it and they just chop off stuff at the other end when you get out of range or something. Oh, is that how that works? Hmm. I should play with that too. I've got it, I think. <laughs> yeah, basically, shinier buttons and 
Bigger price tag. I got all of it on sale. I didn't pay full price for this. I caught a bundle that I think was like 20 bucks for the base game plus three DLCs. I got that on G2A, actually. And then these, uh, the other DLCs I picked up, I got through Indie Gala, I believe. Oh, yeah, all the NFL and NHL games are just reskins. What? Alexa, play my notifications. One new notification from Amazon Shopping. For William, a shipment has arrived. Oh. Oh, I know what that is. I sent my parents a gift for Father's Day. Derp. I should get more into hockey than I have been. I went to a hockey game once. That shit was fun. That was back when they still uh, not encouraged, but did nothing about horrible violence <laughs> so there were like two fights that broke out halfway through the game <laughs> everybody's up on their fucking feet in the audience and the crowd's just going yeah come on beat his ass Rawr! we're talking like gloves come off thrown down and they're grabbing each other by the jerseys and smacking each other in the face uh, that, that was when hockey was amazing it's goddamn Canadians man they don't take shit They take their hockey seriously, and you piss one of them off, or you hurt one of them. Oh, whole team will come out on you. Uh, good times. So much spilled beer in that in that stadium. That was great. It was an exciting game. And then, uh, let's see, that was at a, that was in Fort Collins, I think. What do you mean, take it so easily? Oh, you mean, why do people encourage that kind of fighting? I, I can offer my explanation for it. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> you got two teams of very skilled and to oh oh the yeah the uh, the upgrade every year I don't know why they do that <clears throat> and that's where EA makes most of their money too which is it sucks because it's just these hot, these sports fans keeping EA alive and in a position where they can keep pulling their shit if EA actually had to earn their money ugh. But yeah, every year it's just a reskin. They don't even update the engine, do they? Like maybe every five or six years they'll change the engine or add some features or something. But every year it's just they change the names of the players and stats and all that. Oh yeah, I'll never give EA another dime. Ooh, thunderstorm. <laughs> Just a warning, for some reason my UPS has died for my router and modem and all that stuff, so... Uh, if we have a power glitch here, it'll kill my internet for a few minutes, so if I stop streaming suddenly, that'll be why. So just wait a couple minutes and I'll be back. Just in case. Yeah, Battlefield hasn't really changed much either. I feel like Frostbite really limits them on what they can do. 
Anthem certainly proved that Frostbite's got some pretty bad limitations. And Mass Effect Andromeda. Or Androgynous, I should say. Yay, we're coming up on an arbitrary marker. Oh, they made a sci-fi battlefield? Neat. Cool. <laughs> Again, I hope they don't want me to stop, because I'm not. Give me my points. Salisbury. Ugh, so slow. I wish there was an accelerate time button. Like move the sim at 4x speed or something. <laughs> we could just straight up speed. <clears throat> yeah, there's a terrible life cycle with EA when they buy a studio. If they buy a studio, then you can just kiss their stuff goodbye. <clears throat> what, you mean the last SimCity they released? That was awful. That was when they pre tried to pretend that all the game stuff was actually being done on the server. And then somebody proved that it was all running in, in the game locally. I guess they hacked the game to keep running after the server disconnected and everything kept working. I can't believe EA tried to pull that. Oh. Do you think it just came out too early? If you liked a particular bit of scenery, you can watch it again. Another train view. Another tree view, rather. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, SimCity 4 was very good. City Skylines is pretty good, too. I like that one. It's got its issues, but it's still a pretty good city builder. Such a long train. God, the end of it's still way back there. I just wish that the, the uh, City Skylines DLC was cheaper. Same with Planet Coaster.
But I'm just cheap, so that's my problem, I suppose. Sand patch, it says. Neat. I like that little detail. <clears throat> nice touch that the camera doesn't cast a shadow. Oh. Well, it also helps that I'm not in front of the light. Oops. Speeding again. Oh. Now we're not. Ha <laughs> ha. We can finally go a little faster. Yeah. Well, Paradox is going all social justice, too, so they're kind of... I steer clear of them now. That, and they really pissed me off with Total War Rome, where you had to pay an extra three bucks to get blood added to the game. That's some bullshit. No, I mean they ban people off their forums for all sorts of stupid shit. They lecture people about toxicity and diversity and blah blah blah. Anybody that wants to just talk about actual games, you know, fuck you, get out. You know, God forbid you talk about the genocides that the game lets you play. Get banned for that too. And apparently they also have like, they ban a lot of mods that are historically accurate, but, you know, if they reference the Holocaust at all, they ban those from the forums. Um, if they... And I guess any of the genocide stuff they get really twitchy about, even though their whole point of their sims is to be historically accurate simulations and strategy games. And... At the same time, they have fucking My Little Pony mods pinned on their fucking forums. So, Paradox has a bunch of furries and uh, bronies running their forum. And they either approve of that, or they don't know and don't care. <clears throat> so, that's a fun one. Turbo. Yeah, it just gets me. Like, why do we want to ignore history? We're not allowed to talk about the bad bits. You know, that's kind of the best way to avoid repeating it. There's a reason the the Jews don't want you to forget the Holocaust. It's because it was fucking nasty, and you don't really ever want that to happen again. But if you forget about it, then you kind of forget about the ways and reasons it started, and get into some bad, dark places with that. But no, we have to censor any discussion of it, any portrayal. Yeah. I kind of genuinely wonder how long it'll be before the U.S. hits another civil war. I just get this feeling there's something coming, and I don't, I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah, exactly. That hurts my feelings. I don't want to talk about it. And no one else should be able to talk about it either. Fucking censors. And killjoys. Well, I don't know. Our media is out of control for one thing. They're actively enemies of the public. Uh, you know, bits and pieces of our government are actively conspiring to undermine the other parts. 
and you got people on the far right that, or excuse me, far left, that just keep escalating their rhetoric and their, uh, you know, they're they're taking action now by trying to deplatform absolutely everyone they disagree with, and when they can't do that, they try to get them fired from their jobs and yeah, ruin their lives, their careers, their their families, they attack family members. And it, it's not going to be long before that turns physical. You know, they just... <clears throat> you know, I, I read something pretty insightful yesterday. Somebody said that, uh, you know, we joke about how litigious America is, but, you know, lawyer, lawyering up and going after somebody legally is the last step before just picking up a gun and putting someone's brains on the floor. Um, you know, you, you fuck with somebody's livelihood like that, and you know, pe somebody's going to get pushed th too hard, and they're going to do something like that. And once that, once they cross that line, I don't see the violence toning down or stepping back from it. And there's, there's too many people ready to riot, <laughs> and bitch and moan and protest and beat people up over just Trump. They, you know, their team lost one election and they've completely lost their minds. And we have senators, or not, we have congressmen like Maxine Winter, or Walters, I think her name is, openly telling people to hunt down Republican government officials congressmen, senators people who work for the Trump administration actually harass them in restaurants make them feel unwelcome that's coming from a politician like in high office It actually kind of is the uh you're talking about the electoral college, right? How the popular vote doesn't actually pick uh the president in this country. The reason we do that is that if we didn't, uh then the four most populous states would consistently pick the winner. And everybody else living in every other state would have no voice at all. It just because of how many people live there. And that's uh New York Florida, California, and oh, what's the other one? Texas. <clears throat> Those four states combined have more people, period, than everywhere else in the country. So if just those four places vote the same direction, they'll win the popular vote every time. And so if you live in Wyoming, fuck you, your vote doesn't matter. So... That's why we have the Electoral College. It's to make sure everybody gets a voice. Well, there is a reason to mimic the Roman Empire. They did last over... How many years? A millennia? Something like that? Maybe not that long, but pretty long time. Oops, need to go faster. Well, the other thing is, it's not like we just sat down one day and arbitrarily decided, we're going to be like Rome. You know, there were uh, very intelligent Enlightenment-era philosophers and uh, 
I guess, thinkers that came up with a lot of the principles that we built the U.S. on. Yeah, it's called a representative democracy. We're actually a republic. People get that misconception all the time. We don't vote on every bill that comes up in Congress. Our, our elected officials do. And yeah, they're supposed to vote the way we tell them. If we happen to vote for them, but, you know, it's not perfect. It's better than anyone else has. Because, you know, if they fuck up too hard every two years, they're up for re-election. We can kick their asses out. Except the Senate, they're every six years. Then the president changes either every four or every eight years, so there's a way to balance that, too. Yeah, there's well, there's a lot of money. It's just not usually benefiting us. <clears throat> Wee. <laughs> it was wobbling for a second there. I guess it was the mouse. Oh, nope. It's the second train car. Second engine. <laughs> wobble, wobble. <clears throat> Man, when I picked this route, I didn't remember it being this long. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Bribery's been a weak point in every every form of government known to man. Oh, yeah, it, it's absolutely blatant in the U.S. Very obvious. I mean, they don't even hide it. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point you have to register as a lobbyist, but you can straight up say, yeah, I schmooze with politicians to get my way for my company or my industry. Just right, come right out and say it. And you know that involves money. It's a sort of a an unspoken understanding. Very disturbing. I kind of think it'd be funny if you had to register as a lobbyist and then as soon as you do, they uh, put you in handcuffs, drag you outside the uh, city limits of, you know, the, the d limits of Washington, D.C., kick your ass out and say, don't ever fucking come back. If we catch you here again, we'll, you know, give you cement shoes and toss you in the Potomac. <laughs> Ugh. every time there's a shooting gun control comes up funny how nobody ever talks about Chicago or wants gun control there well Chicago has the strictest gun control laws in the entire U.S., and there's a good 50, 60 shootings there every fucking weekend. Sorry, five or six shootings, 50 to 60 casualties, either wounded or dead, every week. Gun control doesn't work. What do you mean, what kind of shootings? What the hell does that matter? Somebody points a gun at other people and pulls the trigger. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it, troubleshooter. Doesn't matter if it's a gang shooting. It's still 
they're in the the most strict the strictest gun control laws in the country but they've still got plenty of guns and they blow the hell out of each other's gangs and rivalries get settled with guns it's like what's the point of these gun control laws they don't do shit it's illegal for you to have that gun or to use it okay bang bang fuck you come do something about it and then you have a shooting that you know maybe once a year where some psychopath goes batshit and kills a bunch of people Well, it's funny, shootings like that don't go very far in places where there's no gun control, or less. Like, uh, there was a shooting last year in a church, I believe, in Texas. You know what stopped it? Somebody came back with their own gun and blew their fucking ass off. You know, you answer gunplay with gunplay, and that puts a stop to it quick. And there were fewer casualties in that because somebody shot back. I guarantee you that shooting in New Zealand would not have resulted in 50-plus deaths if if just one person in that church had been carrying a weapon. You hear that gunfire, and you see people go down, you pull out your gun, and you see the person shooting, and you empty your magazine into him. And that's it, shooting over. Oh yeah, I don't I don't see that shit going down in Finland either. Like you said, they're really well armed. They wouldn't put up with that either. Oops, I'm speeding again. <laughs> no, 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 that's not what vodka does. See, you get drunk and you don't care about the consequences of shooting somebody. So if, if they have earned a bullet, they're going to get it. Now, I like Finland. They've got their heads on straight. It's the Swiss that are really screwed up. They're basically voting their own rights away, their own sovereignty away. Very depressing to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, the speed limit's terrible. I want to drive one of the French trains where they go under 50 miles an hour. Oh, hey, we get to stop in five and a half miles. Uh-oh, what's Bob doing? I don't... I don't like the looks of this guy. Makes me nervous. Slouching Bob, what are you doing? And see, that's kind of why I think the U.S. is slowly edging towards something nasty. The We have this concept of the uh, uh, silent majority. You hear constant batshit insanity come out of the extreme left and surprisingly little insanity coming from the right but there are still extremists on the right too and all this constant clashing and clattering back and forth between these two sides that just can't stop sniping at each other and you have everybody else in the middle who pretty much stay out of it. They don't talk as much about their politics. They keep it to themselves. Um, but there are people all over that are just getting really fed up 
with constantly being told everything wrong is their fault, that you know, your skin color means you have privilege, or your gender means you have privilege, you're bad because you're white, or you're bad because you're straight, and, you know, you're wrong if you try to protect your children from these people who want to change their gender, change their kids' gender. And I just feel like you know, the repudiation of all that was Trump getting elected, and it didn't stop. So I just wonder what's going to happen next, you know? And I feel like just more average, ordinary people are getting pissed off enough to stand up and start actually punishing people, you know? Oh yeah, there's there's only two parties. <laughs> yeah, there's a green party. Get this, there's a Nazi party in the US. It's got like a hundred members. Um, there's also a communist party. It's got very few members. There is a uh, the Green Party, of course. There are independents, like Ross Perot ran as an independent back in God, I think was he ninety two? Or 96. I know he pissed people off because... Uh, oh, he might have been... You know, 2000, I think, was Ralph Nader. Yeah, the independents always piss off whoever loses the general election because they take away votes from the loser who would have won without the third party taking the votes. So it's always funny to watch people get pissed about that. But yeah, there's there's no real power in any of the third parties or extra, outside the two main parties in the U.S. I don't think there's anybody outside the Dems or Republicans in the House or the Senate. I don't think there's any Green Party uh, governors either. So we basically pay lip service to it, and that's it. I think some researchers did some kind of study that figured out there's... Uh, the way our election system works, it's impossible to really have a multi-party system. The best we can ever do is two-party. I really personally want to see the Democrat Party collapse and have something better come out of it. I think the leadership they have now combined with the crazies they have it's, it's just not effective they can't govern they, they're they busy infighting and uh, lecturing people and being you know, moral paragons or guardians and we're sick of that shit <laughs> that's one way to look at it Nico bunch of morons voting on morons to do moronic things there, there's a great YouTube video uh, go search for this, it's only like 30 seconds long, it's a parody of the Universal logo uh, that, that shows up at the start of movies made by Universal search for fuck this gay earth 4k it's beautiful And that's, uh, that, that gets my chuckle out of me every few days. Something will frustrate me as I read about it. It's like, ugh. And that video makes me smile. Makes me feel better. Yeah, when you really come down to it, uh, doesn't really matter who wins the election. Not a whole lot actually changes. I, I do have to say Trump has kind of done more than most politicians the past few decades. That's why a lot of people on the left are so pissed at him. He's actually doing things. My favorite, and it's something that the uh, media hasn't noticed and doesn't report on because they're just kind of... Well, they're on the take, and they don't know how to spin this into positive news, so they 
just don't report it. Um, Trump has nominated and had installed probably forget how many hundred uh, federal judges appointed. It's, it's in the hundreds, though. And they're all conservatives. So even <clears throat> even the Ninth Circuit Court, uh, which is a famously liberal, uh, ridiculously liberal and activist court, is getting quietly dismantled and replaced with you know, people that actually follow the law instead of, uh, you know, engage in judicial activism. <laughs> yeah, that crap's insane. I don't think there's much comedy left in the U.S. because every comedian just stands up and bitches about Trump for 30 minutes. It's so fucking boring. But yeah, his his climate change attitude is really disappointing. It's it's one thing I don't like about him at all. I think I get what he's trying to say. He's just not saying it anywhere close to intelligent. And he comes off like you said an absolute fucking idiot when he talks about it. You know, I uh I think what he's trying to drive at is that there's um, there's a lot of scamming and a lot of con artists involved in climate change stuff. Like, uh, people who peddle or happen to manufacture some of these, you know, supposedly green technologies, you know, they push it a little hard because they happen to sell the gear that does it. So, it's in their vested interest to encourage or push the country towards their stuff. And there's also a lot of ignorance about what's green and what isn't. You know, like, uh, you know, solar panels cost... Uh, yeah, exactly. Electric cars are not going to save the world. Solar panels um, have some pretty high costs in rare earth material rare earth metals the word rare is in there for a reason we don't have an unlimited supply of it <clears throat> there's a high carbon cost in manufacturing those things and there's a lot of fear about nuclear power plants that really shouldn't exist and you know people still just panic about it and you know we We'd have energy independence if we'd just start using them, but we can't build them because people are so scared by it. Oh, yeah. The U.S. needs mass transportation like crazy. There's just no... There's nothing. We have Amtrak to get around, but it's just so slow. Okay, we're on a downgrade, but for some reason, the train is slowing down when I kill the throttle. The hell's up with that? Alright, 130 yards. I don't want to screw this up. Oh god, we're stopped. Now we're going to roll backwards. Oh, no, I guess not. Well, the Japanese have a smaller landmass to cover, too. The problem with the U.S. is just how big it is. 
and that's the big stopping point for uh, you know building good mass transit here. It's just prohibitively expensive. Oh, they're going to try to ban regular cars after 2030 in Finland? That's insane. There's just stuff that electric cars aren't good at. And uh, hauling is a good example. I couldn't tow shit with my Prius. The manual says don't try it. Like the, the owner's manual of that car straight up says don't fucking tow shit with this car. That's the only car I've ever had that, that the manual says that. I've seen sedans and regular cars. The manual will say, we don't recommend that you tow things. But here are some pointers in case you try. <clears throat> but the Prius manual says, no, motherfucker, you're not towing with this car. Okay, come on now. This is ridiculous. Six yards and it's not counting it? I can't roll past that red light. It'll... There we go. Holy shit. It gave me a lot of points for that. Yeah, that's a big problem, too. <clears throat> Yay! I completed a service. Please exit the vehicle. Alright, first or neutral. We're actually doing gameplay stuff! Bob, you have the con. Yeah, you know how it is. That <clears throat> the younger generation always gets fucked by the older. You know, we leave shit for you guys to clean up. I feel, always feel bad about that. Oh, sure, and the train fucking takes off. Do you guys see that? Yeah, there it goes. Bob's running off without us. There's no car here to pick me up. Wait a minute. This isn't funny. Oh, there are people here. Never mind. Bye bye, train that I drove for like 50 miles. Hello, Bella. <laughs> and yeah, that's a big problem, too. You have, uh, you know, some politician pushes to get something in. It's going to take 20 years, and he gets kicked out of office 10 years in. So the next guy that comes in doesn't want that project to happen, so he scuttles it or fucks with it, defunds it, whatever. And so you've got 10 years of wasted time and en energy and resources on something that never gets finished, even though it was a good idea. All because some dickbag doesn't agree with it or doesn't want it done. Doesn't want it done. They've been trying for like 20 fucking years to get uh, passenger rail between Orlando and Miami. And they're finally fucking doing it. Like, they've got a company, a private enterprise, that's building a lot of it. There's private money in it. There's federal funding. Um, and even the Trump administration is moving ahead with it. So, I mean, that's a good sign. So there's actually support for this, and they're they're finally going to extend. It's already in service between um, Miami and I think Palm Beach County, <clears throat> and the line to Orlando is already under construction. They've got the right of way set up. 
and they've even got the railway route planned between it's going to extend from the airport in Orlando uh, all the way to Miami. It's going to go through Cocoa Beach or Cocoa rather and then yeah. Uh, but after 20 freaking years they finally have it put together enough that they'll probably get it finished. Probably. There's always a chance it could go you know, fall flat on its ass and stop, but yeah, it's got a chance. Okay, I guess um, I guess there's nothing else on this route. Last time I did this, there was a big floating book here, and I could pick up and do something else, but whatever, we finished that, so go pick another route. Well, the problem with privately funded stuff is that there's there's less of a guarantee that there's any public interest in allowing it to finish or having it done. Let's go pick a different route. Let's do some man track stuff. We'll drive the Excella. That'll be fun. Okay, this is a longer route. Let's do this one. All right, Yarga, your guest. Have a good night. <clears throat> now, can Wilfie remember how to drive this fucking thing? I'm pretty sure this one's just breaks off and then reverse her forward and go. Welcome back, Neo. I think this is Excella. Doesn't really look like it, though. God damn it. <laughs> well, I know we can go at least 60 in this bloody thing. It's a long train. <clears throat> Turn the cab light off. It's too dark in here. Or too bright. Alright, so we wait about a minute. Oh, okay. What's wrong, Turbo? <laughs> Our big 20-plus pound cat's walking around the house going, Row! I'm still on the fence, guys. Do you think I should hop a train and go to Washington, D.C. for a day and ride it back? My wife's going off for a week up north to uh, northern Georgia to uh, go hang out in a cabin for a while. And so I'll be here all by my lonesome for, I think she said, eight days. And uh, let's lock that door. And she pointed out I can get a, a round trip ticket to go up to D.C., hang out for the day, and then come back and be home the next day for $270. So, I mean, it's it's 
not dirt cheap, but it's cheap. That's a long trek. And See, that's the thing. I am supremely self-conscious about live streaming when there's other people around. Because I feel like that's an asshole thing to do. And, like, I'd b bother people. But I would absolutely love to do it. Nope, nope. Reverser goes forward. Brake gets turned off. Independent brake released. And this train doesn't want to move either because it's a prick. Oh, I pushed it too far. Oops. There we go. Yeah, I guess I could. I mean, I know how to be quiet. And, and to be honest, I've actually, the last couple of times I've been on a train, uh, I don't, I don't like to sit in coach and it's not because I'm a snob or anything. It's, um, and actually the coach seats are fucking comfortable on an Amtrak. You can sleep on just the basic, you know, basic ticket. You just get in your coach seat, lean, it leans back a long way. It's really comfortable, nice wide seats. And it's quiet, so you can sit there and chill and sleep and whatever, and it's really comfy. Um, I don't like sitting in coach because there's a much better option, and that's the snack car. Uh, there are tables and you know with lots of seats in the snack car, and they've got electric outlets. And, well, they do on the coach seats too, but you're not expected to be whisper quiet in the snack car. So what happens is you get people coming and going and you know they'll stop to have a bite to eat or they'll just sit there and lounge and conversations happen you get lots of people to talk and those are some of the best interactions you can have with other people because you know you're you're stuck together on the train you're not really going anywhere um, and you got nothing but time so people have conversations you meet some of the craziest most interesting characters <clears throat> on those little jaunts in you know some people get they're only there for a little while some people are going on the train longer than you so you'll see someone there for an hour and you'll also be there for you know a few hours and the same person will be in that seat the whole time you're on the train uh, and it's uh, it's so much fun so I mean, that could be really fun to live stream And they have internet on the trains. Uh, I don't remember if it's... Well, they've got Wi-Fi now. I forget how good the signal quality is. I actually wouldn't want to use their Wi-Fi uh, just because it's limited. And I think it's... I mean, it's, it's probably a cellular thing anyway. So my cell phone could get better service on its own. And that whole thing is... Uh, their link is shared by everybody on the train that uses their Wi-Fi. So if I live-streamed over it, it would, you know, hog all the bandwidth. <clears throat> yeah, see, Nico, it's exactly like that. And, you know, you're right. I hadn't thought of it that way. We, yeah, I could do just... Oh, shit, I'm supposed to stop here. Ah. Bye. Ah. <laughs> I totally whiffed that. <laughs> Got to talking and just completely blew past this one. <laughs> Let's restart that. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. See what happens? You get into talking and you lose track of time. <laughs>